I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Halsey Miner, CEO and founder of Vivid Labs. Halsey, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time today. Uh, Ashton, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. A lot going on in the NFT space, especially uh, you know in New York right now is the NFT NYC. I know, I know your team is participating there, and it's tough to keep up. Um, despite market conditions, NFT space continues to grow uh, with real world adoption as well. And I'm excited to hear your take on it. I'd love to start off our conversation by just hearing a little bit about uh, what you and your team have built surrounding uh, Vivid Labs and, and how you're applying that to the NFT space. And then we'll dive into all things Vivid Labs. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we sort of consider ourselves NFT 2.0 because we have a lot of um, uh, features and capabilities that that you know today typically today you've got an NFT that has some form of media a short video an image <coughs> and um, and and that really sort of restricts the overall utility that NFTs can have. Um, what we've built is the ability to have a single container that has um, an unlimited number of files. Um, we support over 200 different file types in, in the container. It can go up to 32 gigabytes. Um, we have live streaming as part of a service inside of it so you can take a movie and you can you can you can stream it um and then the last part which is um i think i mean honestly the word revolutionary is sort of overused but um all of our nfts can be updated mm -hmm. so it allows the NFT owner, whether they've been given it or they bought it, to basically maintain a relationship with the original creator. And so a lot of our use cases, they look different. Some, some look the same as traditional use cases, just they're a lot more rich media. Um, some of our use cases are completely different from anything that you've heard in the nft domain today so um you know by basically creating this entirely new sort of technology stack um i don't i don't even know that we're in the nft i mean we use the blockchain and we use the same things that that you know and we can put we can put our nfts on on uh, our own blockchain polygon palm etc mm -hmm. so we have all those attributes but when you actually sort of experience what we can do with the technology it's so um it has so many more capabilities that it almost sort of feels like a new thing um so you can you can take a single image and you can um very quickly uh publish it and I'll, i can talk about it in a, in a second the way we publish we allow uh for publishing of nfts um um, so you can take a single image and you, you can go and send it to whatever marketplace you want. So you can do that. Um, it's just um, the fact that we allow you to do so much more um, that's really defining our customer relationships and the use cases that we have. Mm -hmm. Incredible, Halsey. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, all those file types, the, the file size, and I feel like those are huge limitations in what we see in the blockchain right now. Um, yeah. Throughout NFTs in the last two years, I feel like it's done so much for people who have been interested in blockchain technology, um, bringing that kind of technology into the real world, and also for artists and creators, for them to have this technology to have them allow them to monetize and own their own artwork digitally and be able to monetize off that, um, you know, in perpetuity and, and, and beyond. Um, have you, how do you see NFTs 1.0 in the last two years? And you know, this sounds like a huge, uh, huge upgrade to, to what's coming. Um, but following along, 
do you see this as the right time um, through what we've seen so far with NFTs to be introducing this next level of the technology? Yeah, I mean, I think NFTs are a bit stuck with the technology that they have today. Um, it just uh, dramatically limits the use case. Um, you know, I launched way, way, way back when in 1994, I launched and built um, a CNET network into a NASDAQ 500, NASDAQ 100 company um, with about $500 million a year revenue. Uh, and we gave away content. That was the model. It's, it's the same today if you go to CNET, right? So, so our whole model was really about taking the traditional model, which was paying for your newspaper, paying for your magazine, and giving and giving it away, and that was that was that was a really revolutionary thing to do at the uh, at the time. But the website was this cool new thing that could do uh, audio, graphics, uh, text. Uh, um, it could even do some video. We we were a unique company because we we had five t technology TV shows as well as our online part. So the, the website was this com completely new way of rendering content. And, um, and so, so I feel like today, like what we've created is like the new website, except instead of it being about um, uh, reducing the value of content, it's about increasing the value of, of, of content. So, so let me give you, you know, just let, let me just give you one example that, that I think will be really helpful um, for people to sort of imagine the kind of use cases that happen beyond sort of art that's really defined. I mean, I, I think art in five years is going to be 10% of the, the use cases. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we have a, a, a customer um, who is... Um, in the um, estate planning business. And their customers are people who create last will and testaments. And I'm sure you've heard of the story, we all have, of where somebody dies and the last will and testament is challenged. Mm -hmm. um, they say that it was signed later, that it was signed under duress, uh, that the person who did it was not of sound mind and body. Um, there are so many things that people can say about a document because the document doesn't have a lot of context to it. Mm -hmm. so, so because we support, I mean, we support, you know, Excel files, Word, pages, you know, I mean, you, you go for PDFs, whatever. Um, they're, they're taking the, the last will and testament and related documents and they're putting them on the blockchain and they're adding to it a video of the person describing exactly why they're making the decisions they're making. You can see them sign it. You can see them address the camera. You can see them explain, you know, why each decision has been made. There's no room for misinterpretation. It's all very clear. The dates are clear because the blockchain tells you when um, when a uh, a document has been signed and put on the blockchain. Because it's updatable, you can change your will, um, and we provide a timeline of of, of um, activities that that happen on the blockchain, so you can track that over time. Um, and then the final part, which is really, I think, you know, um, kind of sweet, which is, you know, the ability for the deceased to be able to leave messages behind for all of the various different people who meant something to them in their life. Mm -hmm. Now, you could actually, this is a, this is a good use case. It's very easy to understand. But there's no reason why you couldn't put, you know, every document in a in a legal case and every video that's taken from depositions, put it in an NFT, put it on the blockchain, and share it out to all of the related parties who have access to that kind of information. Mm -hmm. 
so so you know that's kind of like the the whole new world of of um, business applications that we that we enable. Um, but you know we're also doing um, you know we have customers who are are um, are creating NFTs, but they're not just an image. Um, we have a we have a customer natural selection. Uh, they have one NFT that has uh, it has an image. Uh, it has a 3D object of the snowboarding course, um, and then each of the 13 tracks on the mountain. They have videos of snowboarders going down through those tracks. So you actually have the full experience of what it's like. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a much, much, much richer experience for the people who, who buy the NFTs. And they've been, they've been very, very, very successful selling them. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a third use case. Um, which is, um, I, I would say we're less far along here, but it's, uh, it, it's uh, I think, going to be a very, a very important use case. Um, let's say you, you buy an Hermes um, um, bag, and it looks exactly like the $750 ones that come from China. And, you know, you take our app, which I can talk about later, um, you can scan a QR code. Down from the cloud comes proof of purchase, um, a video of how it was made, a video, uh, an, Im an image of it, um, and a story of of um, Airbus and the history of the company. Um, and they have the ability to continue to send you content over time, so they can maintain a marketing relationship. It is in music where we're starting to see a lot of traction now. Um, you can um, you can put twelve songs, an album. You can put an album co cover. You can put video from the recording studio. You can put pictures from backstage. You can put audio from a concert, right? And you can send your tour schedule. And every time your tour schedule uh, changes, you can send a new tour schedule out and um and so it just vastly broadens the kinds of things that you can do with nfts mm -hmm. so we've spent the last year and a half um building this um and we have you know a number of different platforms depending on whether you're a big business or an individual incredible policy and those are some great examples um, and especially just showing the different types of, of content uh, that you can put into um, in this NFTs and, and, and to have different types of content into one you know, package as well, I think is, is a huge benefit uh, because often you need different types to make a, a full picture. Um, as, you, as you mentioned with the, with the will and testament, having video documents, all of the like together um, and not having it all scattered around. Um, now it, may, it makes things more valuable, right? If you if you buy an Hermes, um, you pay fifteen thousand dollars, and and I know this is an extreme example, but there are plenty of others. There could be Nike tennis shoes, etc. Um, you know, when you get an NFT and it has the the early drawings and it has the you know production process and has it actually makes the product worth more. I mean, it isn't just the fact that you have proof of ownership you actually understand more about what it is that you're buying. And so it, it, the, the value goes beyond, um, the value goes beyond um, um, just proving that it's the real thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and, and I think that this ability to sort of update uh, NFTs is going to create an entirely new kind of marketing interaction that can go on between, you know, even artists, you know, I, I think even if, even if it's a, uh, even if it's just a single GIF, having the ability to be able to, to push content in the future mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, one of the things that, that we're working on now, and I think it probably will be another, I don't know, month or so, is, um, you know, everything that I'm talking about runs on our blockchain, the vid blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, but we should very soon be able to um, take these rich NFTs uh, and put them on, uh, you know, Palm and um, Solana and Polygon so you can sell them at all of these traditional markets, which don't support the rich media we have. Mm -hmm. But um, by using the standard, you know, we can have an image in the marketplace and then a link back into all the content. Um, so we can take advantage of the, of the, of the relatively, um, I would say, uh, early um, uh, technology of NFTs, um, and we can still work with that to deliver these 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 much richer NFTs using these 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 first generation markets. Mm -hmm. That's incredible that you can part uh, like link back to the existing networks and sort of build off from there. And I know, although we are early, it's great to be able to connect to the early uh, platforms and, and bridge them to something that's even yeah. bigger. And yep. you know, I, I was looking that's... through your guys' clients. I saw that you're already sort of working with some Hollywood level partners and like a lot of different, you know, you mentioned different sizes of companies can work with different levels of the applications in, in Vivid Labs. I'm curious on your take on all of, uh, you know, all of the Hollywood companies jumping in or all companies sort of jumping into tokenization of NFTs in a certain, in their own way and in, in ways that benefit their, their products and, and for their customers. And um, although the technology seems early on in, in, in beta stages, you're seeing such great adoption from so many companies. Yeah, I mean, so, so we really have three main products. We have Vivid Pro and that lets um, any company create a white label um, marketplace for themselves um, and you know there there are a lot of companies who don't just want to dump everything they do in open sea you know they have a community of their own they want to sell into their own community some of those um, nfts may be the kind that could be sold on open sea you know if it's um if it's snowboarders you know some of the snowboarders are well known to snowboarders, but not well well known to the rest of the world. So, so we're seeing a lot of people who want their own marketplace. So, so, so that's the kind of the highest end. Um, then there is Vivid Shopify, which makes it really, really easy because you have all of the Shopify tools um, for managing inventory and payments and all that sort of stuff. And we've got. Um, I, now, honestly, I think one of the coolest things that I sort of created today, which were actions I created, uh, my company created, um, which is our our app, um, which allows you on Android or iOS to, uh, you know, in a matter of minutes, add, you know, video, audio, you know, add all these files to, you know, together. Um, and then to be able to, you know, say I want to mint 50 of these, I want to mint them on Polygon, um, and uh, and click the button and uh, and be able to create these these super rich um, NFTs, you know, right from, you know, an ordinary, um, you know, uh, phone. So and and, and you, you know we see it, the, you know, a lot of people think about NFTs as just things that are bought and sold so i think there's a whole nother category of things and um and our, our app has kind of like a, a sort of social aspect to it so mm -hmm. so i can create an nft and i can share it out with all my friends of course all, on my social networks and the re reason that's important is because you know there there are some uh recording artists who can get a lot of money for their nfts and then there's the other 99 percent who really are going to have a hard time sort of uh, selling their NFTs, but they can drop a song, they can drop, uh, uh, you know, them in the recording studio, pictures, live live events, like they can use it as a marketing tool in order to be able to um, take this 
this content box um, and be able to share it out. And so, so we, we see I mean, the challenge for us really is there's there's just this broad range of use cases that goes from super valuable content that you know will have a very high price, and I I think the content that goes through us will typically be more valuable because it'll have more content and more context around it. Um, you know, all the way over to these um, people like the uh, law firm I was telling you about, where you know that's just a that's a that's a SaaS app, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you've got bands who just want to be able to. Um, uh, I mean, if you go way way back before um, um, Facebook, it was uh, well, it was Friendster, and then it was um, what was it called? Oh, oh my god. Space. Yeah, MySpace was started by bands putting content up. You know that was the, the that that was the genesis of the entire thing. Was you know bands putting all their content, up, putting images, putting up you know their music, etc. So, so there's a you know there's a real precedent for this you know happening, um, and you know musicians have to be savvy and they have to use the most recent tools mm -hmm. in order to be able to sort of you know build their uh following um in the real world and online mm -hmm. great point and i'm really looking forward to seeing that on the on the app because i feel like there's a gap right now uh in in the creation of nfts and making it as easy as taking a photo on your phone or just posting a photo to instagram you know there's still a uh, a technological barrier to entry, whether it's um, you know people having to go to the NFT marketplace and, and create an account and go through those steps, uh, I feel like it's not as easy as it could be for everyone to start uh, making NFTs and especially in those other file formats. You know, totally in those other file formats that you're talking about. Well, well, it's very limited. I, I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send you the uh, I'll send you the alpha. You can play with it yourself. And you, and and you can uh, and you can see what it's what it's like. I mean, it's um, um, you know, it's all those features in a really kind of simple UI, um, and um, really we're just uh, waiting for the ability to make sure we can we can drop all of these on all of these other not only the blockchains but also um, and and, and it kind of makes us like a layer zero chain mm -hmm. because. You know, we can move, um, um, you know, NFTs from, you know, uh, we can take one of our NFTs off of, here, here's, here's what I think is going to end up happening. People are going to get an NFT um, off of someplace like OceanSea. They're going to bring it back onto our platform. They're going to add some more content to it, and then they're going to put it back out. Into, into into another into another platform, mm -hmm. and um, because he, I mean the ability is, is there, you know the ability will very shortly be there to sort of to sort of do that. Um, um, so anyway, yeah, I think you'll, you know, it's it's still it's still it's still an alpha, but we're making a very quick progress, and um, you know I think certainly before the summer's out, um, you know, you know I mean if, if you go way back into my history when I started CNET. Um, there were no web publishing tools, so kind of hard to believe that world existed, but it did. There was no databases that published. Um, um, so we, we built our own, and then we spun it out, and we kept 35% of it, and um, it became an $11 billion company and the most successful website publishing tool. And so I sort of feel like we're kind of back in the same sort of position where what we're trying to do is to make NFT publishing um simple and, and uh and profitable um so we're, we're not we're not a marketplace we're not but but we give you access to all of these to various different marketplaces uh and we give you lots of different use cases um and you know we give you um um superior ways to um create value than these very rudimentary you know, I, it's nothing against OpenSea, but I mean, 
you know, I've been doing stuff for 27 years, you know, I started CNN, I found the sales source, started Google Voice, you know, going on. And um, you just see that, that things go from being very simple to much more complex and, mm -hmm. and feature filled. Mm -hmm. And when we're in that very, very low feature, um, you know, area for uh, NFCs, you know, very, very limited use cases right now. Definitely, yeah. Still big, still big business. I mean, I have to take nothing away from the size of the market, but yeah. But I just think there's so much more that can be done. Yeah, even with uh, you know OpenSea and these NFT marketplaces, the volume being traded is is surpassing some of the largest e-commerce platforms, um, and we're still only in the JPEG uh, you know version of it. So when we move to all file formats, I can imagine the opportunity size, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Vivid Labs be a part of that as well, and and be one of the big players yeah. in it. Um, so yeah, so we're so really. ahead. And now, now, Halsey, what is the best way for people to, um, you know, follow along for when the app is coming out into the public? And if there's other companies interested as well in, in, in working with Vivid Labs and learning more? Um, yeah, so, so vividlabs.com um, and uh, our blockchain is powered by the, uh, by the, by the, the vid token. Um, and, um, um, you know, if you go to your web to our website, there are a variety of different socials that you can join and, 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 and participate, um, can, um, uh, you know, sort of participate in our, um, in our community. Um, you know, I think, um, I'm done. I'm sure that over the next, you know, six months, Knowing the customers we have that are starting to roll out, um, you know, I, th I think we're going to grow. Um, we're, 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 we have a very fast growth plan ahead of us mm -hmm. based on taking the customers that we have that are in development now and, um, um, and, and, and getting them to market. Incredible. Looking forward to seeing it. Uh, thank you for all the information, Halsey. It's uh, it's a big opportunity that lies ahead, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. I will leave the link to Vivid Labs in the description box below for all the viewers as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you, Ashton, for having me on. I really appreciate it.